There we go. Everything's working. All right. Live. Hey, everybody. So welcome to the May 2020. Uh, I almost said CRA Academy, but it's the May 2020 <laughs> webinar. We do have our CRA Academy. It's actually the busiest CRA Academy we've ever had. And I do want to start this webinar, and I will end it with a contest I'm running, Chris. Um, right now, I wish you can share this, but everybody go to my Instagram. There's the contest, uh, my latest post. Happy International Clinical Trials Day. Did you know that it today's International Clinical Trials Day? I did from the meme you sent me this morning. Okay, good. So happy International Clinical Trials Day. I am giving a free CRA Academy scholarship, so we are, me and Chris, to the most creative or inspiring post that tags me on LinkedIn or Instagram. So to win this, you only have, the deadline is only until midnight tonight. If you ask me whether it's Pacific time or Eastern time, you already lost. So don't do that. <laughs> wait, wait, what is that? We're just asking questions? Yeah. Okay. Because, because uh, you should just do it now. Like this $4,000 sure. value. Sure. Um, so basically, create a post either on Instagram or LinkedIn. You know, whatever. It could be a video. It could be a post. Whatever you want. It could be an essay. Whatever it is, you got to post it publicly you got to tag me, and then I will pick the um, most creative one at uh, midnight. I'll do it tomorrow when I wake up. I'm not going to stay up till midnight. And uh, we'll pick the winner for this quarter CRA Academy, which first class is on Saturday. So, yeah. I... so happy, happy International Clinical Trials Day to everyone. And it's actually very much related to this webinar topic today. And um, someone with me happy clinical Sunday day as well. I'm going to slaughter your name, so I'm already apologizing. But something like Iriklis, I R A K L I S. Okay. I apologize for that pronunciation, but thank you for wishing us a happy clinical trials day as well. Yeah, happy International Clinical Trials Day. You know. When we scheduled this webinar, I didn't plan, I didn't know it was going to be International Clinical Trials Day. I kind of realized that last night, and, but it worked out well. You know, this is destiny. And now if you win this contest, you will be in the CRA Academy. That will be destiny for you as well. And let's say you win this contest and you don't want it. You can actually do it for a friend. You can gift it to a friend. So, uh, yeah, what a gift. You know, you're giving the gift of a lucrative career uh, to someone. Um, so let's talk about lucrative careers, all right, Chris? This is clinical research is truly recession-proof for generalists and go-getters. Do you agree? For the most part, yeah. Yeah, I agree, too. The problem the is, time. well, the problem is, and I don't know if it's a problem, but the reality is, Nobody starts out as a generalist. You're going to start out as a specialist somewhere, you know. Even entry-level positions are specialists. Like if you think about clinical trial assistant or even like let's say even more niche. Like let's say you are a medical assistant. All you do is draw blood and vital signs at a research site. That's a specialist, all right? So you're a specialist. Also, a CRA is a specialist. A coordinator is a specialist. Now, your goal in any of these positions is to increase your knowledge. So when you start out, you're in a very narrow uh, uh, vertical of your knowledge, right? But your mm -hmm. goal is to expand that, that uh, vertical wider so that you learn more about the industry. So a good example is someone that starts out as a medical assistant at a site that starts to learn what a source document is, what data entry is, what queries are. Then you start learning what action items are. Then pretty soon you're learning what coordinators do. And this just goes on forever, okay, because then coordinators learn what site directors do, Site directors learn what CRAs do. CRAs learn what project, what lead CRAs do. I mean, it just goes on forever. It does not stop. Like there are so many different verticals in this space. So 
the people that are truly recession proof, like we just witnessed, um, you know, this last two months, just complete chaos in every industry, not just research, but every industry. Research was probably one of the least affected, I would say. Uh, but you saw like this kind of thing, maybe not a pandemic, but certainly an economic um, recession mm-hmm. or depression could happen again. And you want to be recession proof, right? You And that the way I think you can do that is to be a generalist, um, doing more with one person rather than having three people do a job. When times get tough, those companies are going to keep one person who knows the most about all those roles. Just common sense. So that's what this webinar is about. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I would agree with everything you're saying. I just, I'm a little bit more pessimistic in the sense that I think if the downturn is harsh enough, I think even those people are going to be in jeopardy, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, there's if it's harsh enough, everybody's in jeopardy. But, you know, like this was harsh enough this time, and there were many generalists that did not get furloughed or laid off, and others did. Right. You know, I mean, it's not just black and white all the time, like that, that clean cut. But as a macro strategy for your career development, being a generalist, I think, is going to have more rewards than being a specialist. It's and also, we're not even talking about technology. I mean, technology can replace some specialists. Oh, absolutely. And, and again, being a generalist is your best insurance policy. I think so, too. You can fail, but your best policy. I think so, too. You know, maybe it's like, we can take a good, a page out of the some investment advice I read actually just this week. So it said if you're diversifying your portfolio, that is to protect your wealth. But the way you amass a lot of wealth to concentrate. So when you're concentrating your wealth or your investments, you're like a specialist, okay? But then once you got your foot in the door, now you need to protect your career or your investment, and now is when you diversify. I mean, it's a perfect analogy, I think. Yeah, I would agree. All right, so what slide are we on now? Um, Number we're on, two? We're on two. Are uh, people in the comments mentioning anything about the free academy spot or any comments? Is there any enthusiasm? No, no enthusiasm whatsoever. No enthusiasm. This is going to be so easy for whoever participates. Uh, yeah. All right. So slide two. Uh, the research industry has remained resilient during the pandemic, right? We're seeing a lot. I just got off a call with Monica, another COVID-19 study. I mean, these COVID-19 studies are everywhere now, right? Yep. In addition to all the other studies that are out there. There's, you know, we talked about this last webinar, all the studies that were supposed to get started in April and May and June are now going to get started in June, July, and August. And all those studies that were initially planning to get started in June, July, August are still going to get started in June, July, and August. Not just COVID studies, all studies. So mm-hmm. it's going to be extremely busy, and we still don't have the number of researchers we need. As a matter of fact, we have even less researchers now than we had before this pandemic because a percentage of them got laid off and furloughed. So yep. we have even less researchers now. So there's never been a better time to get in the industry. And crazy, but we've seen people get furloughed and in the same month get hired like for their dream job. So I interviewed this one gal um she got furloughed as a coordinator, but her goal was always to be CRA. She got furloughed at the beginning of April. By the end of April, she got hired as a CRA. And so the the worst thing that happened to her recently turned out to be the best thing that happened to her recently. So we're seeing a lot of that. People getting furloughed or laid off at their jobs are getting rehired for even better jobs or even more desirable jobs that they wanted. 
What do you think, Chris? Sure. I mean, we just scheduled a, a teleconference with the current client that obviously, I, well, not obviously, but it would appear they're having difficulties with their studies. Um, and they've already been hired by a larger pharmaceutical company. Um, you know who I'm talking about, right? No, but what what's the situation? So they sent an email and said that they thought we could be of help with okay. something going on with the sponsor. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't even think of her name. I would say her name, but I can't think of her name. No, that's was okay case, if you don't. It's better if you don't. But, um, sure, you know, but she was a client. Work. She was a client having difficulties with her research site because of COVID and is already hired with a, with a sponsor. Oh, yeah, like as a lead CRA, right? Yeah, she's not a CRA. She's, she's, regard, um, she's the lead on patient recruitment, something to do with patient recruitment. Okay, yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's another example, you know, like this is a person who was self-employed that is now, you know, coronavirus affected them like it affects a lot of self-employed people as well. Now they get hired, and then yep. they're probably going to go back and run their site too when things stabilize, which is going to be very soon, actually. Yeah. Um, most sites are still active and have modified the way they see their patients in order to maintain patient safety. This is true. Chris, Monica was at the office today, told me that she saw a patient in person. Um, I know you guys at our other site are doing the same thing. Yep. Patients come. It's actually never stopped. Um, but what we would like to see are the new studies get started. Because that's what we're waiting on. Yep, additional revenue. All right, slide three. Slide three, uh, clinical research and COVID-19. The majority of the industry has found ways to work remotely. So this is true. Many employers have furloughed some, but not all employees. Most of the furloughed employees are specialists, meaning that generalists have an advantage. This is kind of what we discussed. But, you know, uh, what do you think about this as I go through some of my comments on Instagram? Because... I had somebody reach out to me recently about this, too. So I would say this is not true just for research. This would be true for all industries. Um, obviously, the more you know and the more value you present to your employer, uh, the more likely they are to keep you on board when uh-huh. things get tough. So that's true of any industry. Yeah. So here's a real-life case in point. I'm not making this up, of what this slide is actually all about. Someone messaged me on Instagram uh, on Monday. I had an interview for a clinical quality assurance specialist position, and it went pretty well. But they said that since we are uncertain of when we could be returning to the office, everyone will be working remotely. And since I don't have experience working remotely, they would have to train me and they can't do that at this time. So there's a couple of things here. The first one is this is exactly why we do remote internships in our CRA Academy. That's number one, exactly this reason. This person is not a student in our academy, though. So the next best thing they could have done is watch these webinars and to watch my videos where I talk about why not get virtual trial certified. You know, there's these free websites out there that will give you free virtual trial certification. And they really want to see that you're able to do this without them asking. Because she may have still not gotten that job if she didn't have the virtual trial experience, but it would have certainly helped her a lot if she would have said, well, I took it upon myself to get virtual trial certified. And matter of fact, at my last position, this is what I did virtually. Anything, right? Other than just taking what they say and 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 that's it, you know, being sad about it. Um, what do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And then, uh, funny enough, uh, Ben Cat. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing the name right. Uh, put a message in the chat prior to reading that that Twitter, Twitter, right? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Instagram, Instagram. Instagram. 
It says, hi, Dan. That's true. One of my close friends is a CRA here in Canada. Currently is doing remote site visits. So, yeah, you just have to be prepared for whatever may come down the pipeline. This is what's happening, guys. I don't care how you used to do your job in the past. You're going to always have to learn how to do your job in the future. And virtual trials, we've been seeing this coming forever, right? They're not going anywhere. Remote is not going anywhere. You've so got to get, like, do what you can. You know, there's free certifications online for virtual trial certifications. I mean, do, like, at least do something like that. Take the initiative to do it yourself rather than somebody telling you what to do. So would you say um, either remote remote uh, site visits as a CRA or remote studies of sorts is similar to when EDC came around? I mean, you have plenty of notice for that as well, right? So I, I was there when EDC, like, I was there in the last year of paper CRF in, uh, like, 05, and then in 06, at least for me, it seemed like everything changed and everything was EDC. But I wasn't there in the 90s to know how that was, you know, like, okay. like to see the writing on the wall. Right. But I assume that came relatively quickly, and I assume I'm pretty sure this is even faster happening. Okay. But it still takes time. I mean, we've been talking about this since 2016 on these webinars. At yeah, at least. Right. So, I mean, this is, you know, this is what you need to do. And if you're a site, if you're a coordinator, and you guys are using eSource, you know, that's a perfect example. Like this person who Instagram messaged me. If they would have worked as a coordinator at a site that is using eSource, they would have had a really good answer to that interview question. Mm -hmm. um, if they worked at a site that didn't use eSource, but they did any aspect of remote, like we've had monitors ask us to scan them documents so that they can monitor it. I mean, anything, e-diaries e with patients, anything would have been good. So this is, again, being a generalist, being a, you know, going from a specialist to a multi-specialist, which is being a generalist. Uh, slide four. So being proactive while staying home. The simplest way to be proactive while staying at home is to take courses on platforms such as Coursera or EDX or edX. I'm not sure. How do you pronounce that? EDX. EDX. Coursera and EDX offer a wide variety of lessons that are easy to access from anywhere. This is absolutely true. Free too. Or do they offer, are some courses paid? Some are paid, some are free, and the free ones have an option to pay for the certificate. Like I just did the uh, breast cancer one with Yale. Um, you know, nobody told me to do that. I just did it. I, I did it because I'm interested in breast cancer because we've Chris and I have a few projects with breast cancer and I thought hey you know now that I'm at home I might as well learn like take it upon myself to learn about breast cancer but you can learn about just about anything online it doesn't have to be just those two courses Coursera or EDX it could be anything you know Google is your friend in this case um, but yes that's exactly right slide number five Oh, we missed one po bullet point here on slide four. Apply to studies if you're a site owner. Yeah, hey, you should do that all the time anyhow. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely. But that's another good point. Like, it's amazing, and we'll take anyone who wants to be our client. We get help sites get studies all the time. But it's amazing how if you work at a site, like, nobody's going to tell you not to go on clinicaltrials.gov and look for studies that are potentially a good fit for your site, you know? And that's how you go from a specialist to more of a generalist. Well, now I know how to get studies. You know, Monica gave a good example of one of our CRC Academy students that did not get furloughed, but three of her colleagues did because she took our CRC Academy. And so she learned how to do budgets, how to recruit patients, how to get studies, and how to be a coordinator. She learned all of that through our course. And, and then she started doing that before the pandemic hit. So when the furloughs needed to be made, guess who stayed and who left? 
You know, it's because she was able to do the job of like three people. Uh, so applying for studies, if you're at a site, easy way to become a generalist. Really easy. You just oh. go on clinicaltrials.gov and start emailing people. So good, good answer there because uh, somebody had asked about a minute ago, how can I find studies? And the person's name is Guli Jomelia. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. How can I find studies in each specific website? So as Dan just said, clinicaltrials.gov. Um, you know, find the contacts for studies you're interested on there and email them. Exactly. Um, okay, slide five. Are we yep. on slide five now? Yeah. Reactive and proactive. So you, I see the X there. You don't want to be reactive. You want to be proactive. I can do an hour on this topic alone, but we won't. Um, so some researchers, this is how you be proactive while you're staying at home. So you can get involved in COVID-19 studies, right? Here's the beauty about COVID-19 studies, besides the fact that there's a lot of them and there's a huge demand. Nobody is the expert in this. So you know how when they ask you, do you have experience with this indication? Well, nobody's saying yes to COVID-19 because nobody has experience with COVID-19. So nobody has experience. You're on the same level now even playing field, right? Um, so you can actually take on some of these studies, right? And then now you're learning another aspect of clinical research, a whole new indication. We have many of our clients are doing COVID-19 studies right now, Chris. And, um, you know, if you are doing this, okay, time, take time away from the office. Make sure you update your CV. Make sure you update your resume. And also update your LinkedIn profile. You got to really beef up your LinkedIn profile. My next interview I'm doing is immediately after this webinar, Chris, with Ashley Margo. Um, we're, she's like a LinkedIn expert. So we're going to talk about how to beef up your LinkedIn profile and, in addition to your CV and how to attract job recruiters uh, to your profile. So. This is what this time away from the office can be used for. You know, don't, like, if you're furloughed or if you're not furloughed, but you just have, you know, less time that you're going to work, uh, you've got to be proactive, right? Furloughed employees are applying to jobs and may actually find better positions after the lockdown. We're actually seeing this happening a lot, a lot. And I know it's happening more than what we're seeing because we don't see all that much as it is. Uh, I mean, we just see a small percentage of the overall landscape. Uh, slide six. Okay. Uh, the pandemic's effect on hiring. Sponsors are waiting for the lockdown to end so they can open enrollment for studies. And that's true of most studies. Not all, though. Um, a good example would be a COVID study. Obviously, they're going to be enrolling right now, most likely. Um, but yes, vast majority of studies are closed to enrollment. Um, once the lockdown ends, sponsors, CROs, vendors, and sites will, will be able to onboard new employees. Um, again, that's not entirely true. I know, as we discussed earlier, um, that a pre previous client has been hired uh, during this time, and many others have as well. So it, just, it depends on the current situation for the potential employer. Many are hiring right now. So if you're a job seeker, continue to put in your your uh, application or CV or whatever whatever it is that's required for the position. Continue looking for your job or your career path. Um, most employers are choosing to interview and hire remotely. Yes, that's that's for sure true. Um, you have anything to add, Dan? Uh, no, I guess that second bullet point, once the lockdown ends, uh, sponsors, CROs, the vendors, and sites will be able to onboard new employees. It probably should say more new employees because you're right. They are already doing this, uh, yep. but they'll, they'll be able to do it at a larger scale very soon. Right. You know, right. now, you know, May 20th, happy international clinical trials day, by the way, May 20th, 2020 is, um, all 50 states have eased restrictions. So 
we're starting to get back to uh, some sense of normalcy, and that means onboarding new employees because research, the research industry, look, this is not entertainment or hospitality industry. Like, this is, you know, there's a lot of work in the pipeline, a lot of important work, a lot of it related to COVID-19 work that needs to be done and as well as other indications. So we're busy and they're, you know, they're onboarding, hiring sites right now, CROs, vendors, sponsors. They can get some really good people because they've been furloughed. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good furloughed people right now that are just applying and, you know, getting their choice of dream jobs, basically. Yep. Slide seven. Any questions? We we have a, we have one statement from I again. I apologize for the name. Ira Ira Cliss. Uh, I agree with taking courses while working from home. I'm taking a course on Coursera and data management clinical research. Even I have limited time with my little son at home. So yeah, it's great. Yeah, and it's gonna. Trust me, employers are going to see that you did that. Nobody's telling you to do this. You know, that that means you're proactive. Um, slide seven, okay? So slide seven, applying to jobs. Recruiters are actively looking for talent. Job seekers should make sure that they pitch themselves to recruiters. Again, your LinkedIn profile is so underrated. You need to have a really good LinkedIn profile. You need to be active on LinkedIn. Uh, join my Patreon channel if you want to learn tips about using LinkedIn. Uh, it's five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Dan Got to get that plug in there. But we give, I mean, it's so much. Like I'm interviewing Ashley about that next. You know, how to beef up your LinkedIn. And then after you beef up your LinkedIn, how to start posting on LinkedIn to get inbound attention for people to see who you are, how to comment on other people's posts. You know how many people are on LinkedIn that expect to get jobs that never comment on anyone's posts? I mean, why not comment on those recruiters' posts? These recruiters are posting all the time. I'm on LinkedIn. I see it all the time. Like, if you want someone's attention, you comment. And you don't comment and say, hey, hire me. That's spam. You comment something of value to that original post, add a comment, add something that's relevant, right? Or if you truly don't understand something and want the post creator to explain further, ask. I mean, that's better than spamming them and saying, hey, check out my CV and my cover letter, right? Like they're, they're going to do that anyways. That's their job. Your goal is to make them realize you exist. Right? So patreon.com slash dance I highly recommend Okay, anyways, um, so also update your CV, your resume, any course you took, put it, put the certification in there, anything you've done. Here's a very important thing. Here's something that uh, I need to say that has not been said. And a matter of fact, I think it stems from another Instagram comment. I No, somebody texted me this one. All right, some here's a here's a perfect Chris. These are like real life examples. Like these webinar topics we come up with, these are real life. This is like, you know, as I was answering this person's question, I didn't even realize this is what you know our topic was gonna be about. So yeah. um where is it? Okay, it's a long one. Let me find it, let me find it. In the meantime, we have a couple of texts here. Uh, sure, Sherpet, read, them, read them while I look for this. I need to buy yep, some time. Yep. Sherpet says, I'm very excited. This is new to me, but believe I'm going to do very well. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, this is Dan is Chris, but you're very welcome. Um, and I'm sure Dan's uh, stating the same thing. Um, let's see, yep. Jesuit, your, res your, your resume and LinkedIn presence introduce you to the recruiters, sites, and CRO you seek to interview with. Oh, absolutely. Good Is point. That one? Yeah. Hey, you don't even need to go outside of this webinar. There's a recruiter right there, guys. 
take the screenshot or do what you need to do. Okay, so let me uh, read this. Good one. Feel free to type in your email if you'd like anybody here to contact you. Yes. And not spam. They know now not to spam you. At least they should. Uh, okay, so here's the qu the question I got. Okay. Hi, Dan. Uh, I'm sending over my resume for you to take a look at it. If you see anything to be changed, please feel free to do so. I did not do that. I'm not going to do some on CV for them. Also, with less than demanded experience, can you possibly give some names of CROs? I really see myself more as a CRA, and I was very successful when I was doing it uh, in the past. So I opened this person's resume, and they're a coordinator. Okay? And on their CV, all it has is like the basic job descriptions of like 90% of coordinators. Okay. So it, it said assist with patient visits, um, assist with IT, assist monitors with queries. I looked closely. It did not have anything at all translatable skills to being a CRA, meaning this is my response. Have you ever reviewed your coworkers or your own source against the protocol or EDC? What about IP accountability verification? What about reviewing the informed consent to see if it was done correctly? These are the main things CRAs do and would be great if you added these to your resume. Some so, sort of quality assurance on their CV would be great. Yeah, or even just spell out literally what you do because I know most coordinators do this. But recruiters don't know because maybe if it's not on your CV, you don't have experience doing this. But this is exactly what CRAs do. So I told this person this is what they need to do. Uh, I don't think they replied. Maybe they didn't like that I didn't edit their CV. Sure. Uh, they were looking for the easy way out. But uh, very good point, Dan. I mean, you always want your CV to reflect the specific job you're you're trying to get. Um, it should be changed for every position you're, you apply for. You can't have just one general CV for every position there is in research or whatever industry. It needs to be specific to what you're seeking. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. That's actually very important. Most people don't do that either. Like most people, I'm guilty of this too when I was seeking contracts as a CRA. I just used the same CV. Um, you know, for all these things, but like to work best, kind of tweak your CV for each different position, right? Like you should have a CV for CRA jobs you want to apply to. You should have a CV for project manager jobs, another one for in-house CRA. Just kind of tweak your CV a little. You're not lying. You're just emphasizing more of what's relevant for that particular job. And the difference, and, and the differences can be very slim, right? Like for example, there with your in-house CRA and CRA, what would be the difference? Well, one's really w working remotely with the site in normal times, and the other one's working on-site oftentimes. So that in-house CRA needs to show that they're capable of working with a site remote. Well, now I've opened a rabbit hole, and I'm in my text messages, which every, anyone can do: nine four nine four one five six two five six. Someone literally just texted me right now. And I want to thank you for your tips on your video for laid off clinical researchers. It was very motivating. I was laid off at the beginning of this month, but I already have a final interview scheduled for tomorrow. See? Mm -hmm. Very nice. In reality, it's not just us having these nice slides, which Carlos does a fantastic job on, and then talking. Like, this is real stuff, guys. This is real stuff. You won't get these kind of webinars anywhere else in the industry. You know, I've been on those webinars. I don't want to go back. You know, you don't get anything of value there. The, our webinars, you get value. You get real practical value and not this academic talk. Okay, so I'm off my rant. We have a question. The experience take a part, excuse me, experience takes a big part in clinical research hire, in the research hiring process. What happens to people like myself that is just getting started in, in the industry? Yeah. So you're, like we said, 
you're starting out as a specialist somewhere. Your goal is to learn your specialist role and become a generalist. So start slowly learning more about things immediately related to your job responsibilities and then just keep branching out. Keep branching out. No one's going to tell you to do this. So do this for yourself. So let me interject something here, Dan. So stepping back a bit from that, just getting that initial position, you want to learn as much as you can about the position you're going to be applying for. And things that you have experienced in your past with, you need to find a way to apply those to the things that are that are necessary for that job, right? So for example, if you're going to be a, a clinical research coordinator, um, you, you have to be detail-oriented. You also have to be able to, to manage many tasks at one time. So in a prior job or anything in life, can you apply aspects of whatever you've done previously to those specific requirements as a coordinator? So you need to find out what the requirements are for the position and then be able to somehow convince whoever you're going to be interviewing with that you have experience for these things, that you can do these things. Uh, anything to add there? No, I think that's really good advice, actually. Then again, uh, uh, Sheriff Ed Jeslin uh, put her email uh, her email address there right above your question. So reach out to her; she can she can help offer some guidance as well. Yeah, help you don't even need to leave through. this webinar to network. You guys are so lucky. Guru Nation is so lucky. You know, okay. when I started out in research. There was no such thing as Guru Nation. Uh, I was looking for this. It's not. It wasn't there. You guys don't even need to leave this webinar to get networking done. I mean, look just within, uh, you know, within our own thing. Uh, let's uh, see here. Wait, wait, wait. So Polu is saying I can't see the chat thread. You have to click on. There should be a link at the top or near the top. It says attendee chat. Right? If you're if you're an attendee, you can still see the chat, right, Dan? Or no? Yeah, you can see the chat. If you're called, then you can't see the chat. No, they're they're on the computer. Yeah, you can see the chat, but uh, the the people putting the questions must be doing it privately to the presenter and not publicly. Oh, it is. Yeah, they're private to presenter. All of them. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, if you're gonna chat something, you can make it public for everyone to see. Um, yeah, that's that's the issue there. Oh yeah, even your message folder is private presenter. Yeah, the default is private. If the public chat is turned off, how do I turn it on? Somebody stated public chat is turned off. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I think there's a way to do it. There's a. I think there's an option to chat to the uh, public there. Okay, well, you do the next slide, and I'll figure that out, because otherwise nobody can see Jocelyn's email. Uh, that's a problem. We can say it out loud, I guess, at the end. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll see if I can't figure it out. You want to do the next slide? I'll move along to eight. Okay, number eight. So applying to jobs during the quarantine. This is exactly what I was talking about. Relying on job titles alone is a bad idea. The exact example I read you about that coordinator that wants to be a CRA. All she did was put the generic CAN coordinator responsibilities. I mean, when I saw her CV, it almost looked like she copy and pasted like an Indeed job description for a coordinator, which, okay, it's fine, but if you're trying to be hired as a CRA, the person who's looking at your CV is going to want to know what transferable skills do you have? Do you review any work of your colleagues? You know, do you review the informed consent? Or do you do you even take the informed consent? I mean, you know, like review think about what a CRA does and think about what you are doing in your job that may not be a copy and paste job description, but things that coordinators do. I know most coordinators check their own work. I know most coordinators check their colleagues' work. They cross check each other's work. They basically serve as the monitor for their coworkers' studies when they have time before the monitors actually come in. 
So this is something you got to put on your CV. You can't be lazy with your resumes because the people looking at your resume are looking to hire people. And if you're lazy with your resume, they just might go to the next one. They'll go to the next resume and say, this one's, this one's not clear about what this person does, so I'm just going to go to the next one. This one's just a coordinator. Um, and so the next bullet point, someone with the title of coordinator may only see patients at one site, but may see patients negotiate budgets and recruit at another site. So you want to add all those things on there as well. Uh, slide nine. Did you figure out how to do the yeah. chat? So, Jevelyn, please, uh, please post your email again. I want to make sure this works, but I have a link to turn on public chat. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Sure. So, please post your, your email again, Jevelyn. All right, slide nine. Slide nine. Don't be afraid to think outside the box and include experience that may be relevant to the job you want. For example, if you're a coordinator that wanted to apply to a CRA position, you can include any QA work that you've done. This is exactly what I just said. If you want to apply for a CRA position, you need to show that you have the necessary transferable skills. Exactly what I said. Uh, slide 10. You want to do slide 10? All right. Generalists and clinical research. Generalists have an advantage during job searches because they are able to do a variety of jobs that would otherwise require specialists. And that's absolutely correct. Um, as a matter of fact, if you are a generalist and you're applying for a specific function or, or job, you want to make sure they're aware that you have other capabilities that could be of use to them and benefit. It just it, it will pique their interest more in you as a job candidate. Um, Trade-off is that generalists are not ex experts in every area. Specialists may still perform better. Also true. So um, somebody who's dedicated all of their life experience to learning one thing, of course, they're going to be better than you who have some knowledge about that area, or even even a lot of knowledge about the area. You're still not dedicated just to that area. So somebody else who's specifically and only dedicated their life to that area is going to be much more knowledgeable. Just like if they had two doctors, a general practitioner and a neurologist, which would going to have a better idea of how the brain functions. Of course, the neurologist, though the general practitioner, will have some knowledge of that. Uh, technology will probably replace many of the specialists. Um, so what specialists will get replaced in research by technology? I mean, I'm not Nostradamus, but I think that simple SDV, source data verification, is the first thing to go. So I'm actually reading a book on AI. It's called The Price of Tomorrow. Um, I recommend everyone read it or listen to it. So basically, AI being, like the easiest AI to create is actually specialized AI, like just very knowledgeable in just a very narrow um, segment. The most difficult type of AI to create, which may not even be done in our lifetime, is general knowledge AI. And so this is exactly what we're talking about here. Like when the industry, not if, when the industry moves to 100% e-source, okay, and now the EDC is all electronic as well, it's going to be very easy for an algorithm to look at a visit, vitals, all these things for a particular patient visit and be able to SDV it with the um, EDC. What's going to be harder is, okay, is this data protocol compliant? Is this data, did what occur here GCP compliant? Is, are, is there enough PI oversight demonstrated here? That's more generalist. That's what CRA should be doing anyways. I mean, these CRAs make good money. They shouldn't spend most of their time, which is what they're currently doing, 100% source data verifying. I think that's going to, in the next 10 years, we're going to have algorithms doing SDV. I don't know about all of it, but a lot of it. That's my opinion. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, yeah. Certainly would make sense. Certainly would make sense if a CR is dedicating more of their time to SDR. Source data review versus yep. source data verification. Absolutely right. Yep. Absolutely right. Uh, 
Who? Anyone asking questions? No. I got to thank you for turning on the uh, public chat. Okay, good. Yeah. Here we go. Slide, uh, slide 11. Sites are getting ready to start up. So, yeah, we've discussed this. I mean, feasibility surveys and site selection visits are being conducted remotely, some even in person right now. Monica, before this webinar, was telling me that there's going to be a site selection visit at one of the sites asking me what day I can go or if it's going to be fun. That won't be a problem for me to actually go. Um, sites are advised to send out as many emails as they can to get studies they need. Emails should be clear and mention the qualities that give the site a competitive advantage. If you are a site and right now you're not as busy as you were pre-pandemic, you can have your staff go on clinicaltrials.gov and apply for studies. Like this, you should be doing that anyway. Um, so that's that slide there. And you're also helping your own employees become more of a generalist in the process. And if you're an employee at one of these sites, you don't need permission. You just do it. Nobody's going to tell you that's a bad idea. Okay. Um, and if they are, then it's probably not a place you want to be at. Um, sites are getting ready to start up. Sites should oh, – I'm on number 12 now, Chris. All right. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Okay. I guess that should be it for that slide. I mean, I I don't really have anything else to add there. <laughs> Fair enough. I would agree. Follow up. Yep. Follow up about anything you're interested in, whether it be a job, getting a study for a site, well, whatever it might be. Follow. That's right. Slide 13. Uh, the pandemic has shed light on clinical research. Many people are now considering some of the career options that clinical research has to offer. This is true. This is actually true. You're going to have a lot of uh, very smart people that are furloughed in other industries, right? Like I'm thinking like new college grads, but it could be older people too. Furloughed from other industries, maybe entertainment, maybe uh, I don't know, some tech companies are even furloughing. All right, these are smart people. Now that clinical research is in the news like every day, people might be considering, hey, I need to consider clinical research. And then you're eventually going to have more competition, is my point, I think. So use this time now that you have the leg up. I mean, you're on this webinar, you know. Joe, who just got laid off from Google or from Uber, because Uber has been laying off, or from Disney, you know, uh, hasn't even discovered research yet, but they might. So use this time wisely, because time is ticking. And pretty soon, we're going to have more people entering this industry. I didn't even really think about this until today, Chris, but this would be good for our academies, I think, both of our academies. Mm -hmm. you know, the, fur the furloughs from the other industries, which some of those industries are not coming back for a while, for a very sure. long time. Okay, so the two simple yet effective ways of starting a career in clinical research is to intern uh, at a research site or to recruit patients for a site. I mean, yes. And I would add getting studies for a site, going on clinicaltrials.gov. If you yep. are out there live on this webinar, or if you are listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, because these are going, we are recording this, right? It automatically records. Okay, good. Perfect, perfect. So if you're watching or listening, um, you, if you want to intern at a site, you need to take the initiative of understanding how clinicaltrials.gov works and the process for getting studies, which is, sending out an email saying, hey, I work with a doctor, or or if you don't work for a doctor yet because you want to intern, I work with many doctors in this area that are considering clinical research and have this kind of patient population. This is how you get studies. You got to send out like 200 of these emails a week. Eventually, you start getting CDAs. If you go with those CDAs in hand, to sites that you want to intern at. I mean, can you imagine, Chris, somebody walked into Breakthrough and said, hey, I want to intern here. Your initial reaction is, 
hey, you know, that sounds great, but you got to take our theory academy or we don't have time for interns right now. We have too many. But if they came in hand and said, I want to intern here and I know how to get studies precise. Matter of fact, here's two CDAs I have. You would like let that person in, give them coffee, whatever they want, like help them out, right? Absolutely. I mean, nobody's going to turn down uh, free labor. Uh, very, uh, I shouldn't say nobody. Some people will, but most people are not going to re- turn down free labor, especially if you if you present yourself well. I mean, you know, it's one thing to walk in and be demanding of anything. You're going to turn off people, but if you walk in and just pleasantly ask, you know, I'm interested in getting started in the industry. I want to learn what I can. Um, I would love to offer my services to you for free. Um, maybe help recruit patients or help recruit studies or whatever it might be. I certainly would not turn that down. Um, I'm sure Dan wouldn't turn that down either. We both own sites. Um, not going to happen. Right. It, it, absolutely not. But uh, even better than free labor is someone that already knows that doesn't need to be taught how to do something that the site needs, like patient recruitment or finding studies. But even there, I mean, I it doesn't take much to teach somebody to do either of those things. Um, if somebody right. just needed 20 minutes, because that's about what it would take, 20 minutes time explaining how to do this, but is willing to do it, yeah, I, I've, I've done this with others. Um, right. But but the idea has to, should come from the person. Because oh, absolutely. not every site is going to be thinking, well, what can this person do? Uh, maybe get studies. You know, the idea needs to come from from the person, from the applicant. Yep. Intern. Yeah, and you can be honest. You know, I'm not real sure how to do it, but I know most sites would like more studies or more patients, and I'm happy to do that for you. I just might need a little direction. Yeah, or even better, I watched Dan and Chris's webinars. Yeah, there you they go. Explained, they explained how to do this. So I've already watched that one-hour webinar, and I bought their book, which is fantastic. I gave them a five-star review on Amazon also. Make sure and mention both of these things, books and webinars. Yes, it will get you (laughs) in most of the time, I think. Um, Okay, last slide. And it sounds like I'm being funny, but actually it is funny, but it's also something that would work because it would show that you took initiative to do something. Yep. And I, I think it's funny, too, but you're absolutely correct. It, it shows that you're taking the initiative. You're proactive. You'll yeah. do what it takes to get the job done. It started as a joke, and the more I was saying it, the more it's like, hey, this is actually a very good strategy. Sure. So last slide. We're right on time here. Guys, bring your questions. Otherwise, we'll be done at the top of the hour. Are you going to take care of the last slide or you want me to? Um, oh yeah, either way. I mean, I can do it if you want. Um, oh, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Entering the clinical research industry doesn't require prior knowledge about research. Many skills from other transferable from other industries are transferable and can be applied to clinical research. Uh, this is exactly right. Marketing, working with patients, with customers, technology, hospitality, these are all transferable skills, all these things. There's even more, like budgets, finance, management. No matter what industry you're in or been furloughed from, this is what I'm telling you guys. You're going to have a lot more competition now um, over the next few years. So it's good that you have a leg up on this uh, now because this, you know, there's just not enough researchers, and the studies keep increasing. So that's it. Good job, guys. Any questions? Now's the time. We'll we'll run it for three more minutes. If there's no questions, we'll end it. Oh, two more minutes. You have two minutes. Unless there's multiple questions. We'll take we'll go beyond the top of the hour if there's multiple questions. But no questions, we end it in two minutes. Yeah, maybe less. Yeah, maybe less. Maybe one minute. You got to give them time to type. I think. Yeah, because I I don't want to, you know, I got to interview Ashley Margo. Waiting. 
All right, Bradley says, thank you for your time. Have a great evening. Thank you, Bradley. You do as well. Everybody, uh, Folu, for transferring from another industry or area of life, of life sciences, it depends on how you present your resume. Um, yeah, I mean, to an extent, yes, absolutely. So as, as I had said earlier, um, or Dan, one of us said earlier, you need to structure your past experiences in such a way that they apply to what you're what job you're seeking. Um, and certainly you can do that with many, many previous life experiences can can apply directly to working in this industry, as Dan just listed um, on the last bullet point there. Um, Anne, great webinar. Thank you, Anne. Had a wrong case. You're welcome. Thank you for attending. Iman. I got to go. Great webinar. Thanks. Thank you, Iman. Have a good day. Uh, thank you. Good time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You're all very welcome. Thank you for attending. That's good. It was um, a great webinar, guys. Join us for our next virtual hangout. Uh, so you got to subscribe to the email list to be notified of the next virtual hangout, which will be in June and as well as the next webinar, which will be in June. And again, the contest is wide open. Instagram or LinkedIn, post something inspirational or creative, um, and we're giving away one CRA Academy roster spot. You have to post it publicly. You can't just message me your picture and nobody else sees it. It's public, you gotta tag me, and I will pick the most creative one uh, at midnight tonight. So, uh, Iman would like to know when is the next, I think it was webinar you were mentioning. Um, do we have a date for that yet? Usually the last Tuesday of the month, right? So, every month we do, uh, we're going to do a virtual hangout, and every month we're going to do a webinar. So, you got to subscribe to the email list, theclinicaltrialsguru.com, to be notified of both. That's the only way to be notified okay. of both. There you go, Iman. Um, all right, so I guess we're done. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, Iman says she's already subscribed, so that works out well. Iman, you're the best. <clears throat> so, all right, um, everybody take care. Uh, happy Clinical Trials Day to everybody as well. All right, everybody uh, have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.